It's not exactly a secret that Toriyama based some of the original Dragon Ball elements on the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West, which of course dates back to the likes of the 16th century. You know the drill, the Monkey King is Goku, Oolong is Yu Baiji, etc. We were talking about it on the channel and in podcasts for many a decade and many a year, and many, many more different content creators have already talked about it in greater detail. And with April becoming the month of Toriyama, we've decided to list some more direct and indirect callouts toward Dragon Ball, and some of the inspirations that went a little further. It's funny, because this franchise is a perfect vehicle to show how culture mixes between periods and different traditions. You have a massive Japanese story that has some clear references to the likes of Star Wars, Terminator, and classic 50s sci-fi movies, which in turn go on to inspire other elements. It's worth reminding you that in the memories of Toriyama from Masashi Kishimoto and of course Eiichiro Oda, the creators of Naruto and One Piece respectively, they cited his works as a huge influence. But alas, we shall do something more direct, sometimes even more cameo-like in terms of adding references. Now we did something like this many years ago, but it's worth reminding everyone, especially in this day and age, of how many things Dragon Ball inspired. Let's start with a manga by an author whom we also sadly lost quite recently, Takahashi Kazuki, probably well known to most of you as the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh. Dragon Ball is named quite literally when the protagonist Yugi imagines that the completion of his millennium puzzle would grant him a wish, just like Dragon Balls would. There's also this junk dealer card in episode 167 of the anime which may or may not intentionally pay homage to Nappa, amongst other things. Another well-known manga, One Punch Man, draws the character of Vaccine Man to resemble Piccolo. Coincidentally, he's voiced by Ryusei Nakao, who's Frieza in the original, and by Chris Sabat in the English dub. I'm pretty sure that was deliberate casting. Returning to Naruto for a moment, the very colour of the protagonist's outfit is one big reference to Goku's gi. Also, the four-tailed beast is one big easter egg for both Journey to the West and Dragon Ball. It's literally called Son Goku, has a crown based on Son Wukong's crown, and the number of tails is based on the four-star ball, which of course, thanks to the Saiyan, is one of the most famous. Also look, there's a Chiaotzu mask over here. But let's leave manga and anime for now and prove that Toriyama had a much wider influence than just from Japan. After all, Dragon Ball is a worldwide phenomena. In Fantastic Four Volume 3 Issue 17, you can find Vegeta, but there are some more subtle inspirations in Western comics as well. The famous Gohan Kamehameha scene, in which he sensed Goku's presence behind him, appears to have inspired this scene from Justice League number 25. The illustrator of this particular page, Jorge Jimenez, had confirmed this connection on Twitter. Video games are another massive area where Dragon Ball inspirations are rather frequent. Obviously, we're not going to be including references in Dragon Quest, as Toriyama's involvement would make that all a little bit too self-referential. You have certain characters paying homage to others with their design and vice versa, but in some cases, it's also connected to the iconic art style of the master. The same is true for Chrono Trigger, by the way. It's hard to tell where it's about something being Toriyama-esque and when the sensei was just making some cheeky nods to his other works. Last time when we talked about video games, we were also talking about Super Sonic and his obvious likeness to the Super Saiyan transformation. I mean, you all know this, this is a classic. Apparently, according to Yuji Naka, Toriyama had never commented on the resemblance, which, if you think about it, was very much in his style. But Sonic is far from being the only quilled mammal hailing from his franchise that has some inspiration from Dragon Ball. To find it, however, we need to go into dangerous territory. The infamous Sonic 06. There, we can find a character named Silver, the hedgehog, who is from the bad future. He's a hopeful character trying to fix the timelines, and the fans have been long speculating that he was based on Trunks. It was revealed in the official capacity by the writer, Shiro Maikawa, that this character had indeed been based on the future boy from Dragon Ball. But from what we know, he is a much more controversial figure for the fans of the Blue Hedgehog than uh, our sword-wielding son of Vegeta. Hmm. Oh well. In one of her many adventures, the half-genie named Shante also comes across as a cheeky reference to Dragon Ball. In one of the missions in Shantae and the Seven Sirens, the protagonist is tasked with bringing Dagron. Dagron is apparently the name of a boss from an earlier game, but still, it became a double reference, so we count that one in. There's also a plethora of games that have 
over 9,000 achievements. That includes Deus Ex The Fall, Magicka, or World of Warcraft, and many, many more. The whole line has been referenced so many times in both games and western cartoons alike that it would require its own list. Obviously, it's a result of a dubism, so it kind of begs the question of whether or not it can be counted as a Toriyama influence, but hey, we can make that count. We wouldn't have that famous translation if Sensei hadn't created it, so we'll let that slide. Speaking of western cartoons, let's make it the final section of today's video. Dragon Ball was frequently referenced in The Mad Show. What was mad, I hear you say? Well, it was an animated sketch comedy, a younger sibling to Mad Magazine, that being of course an American humour periodical which ran from 1952 to 2018, in the form of regular magazine issues. Right now, it's still somewhat alive and available via comic book stores or subscriptions, but the animated show that we're talking about was running on Cartoon Network between 2010 and 2013, and was parodying a lot of pop cultural elements that were well known from that period. Usually it's focused on weird, unlikely crossovers of two franchises or cultural phenomena. As we said, Dragon Ball characters did appear there from time to time, but the most well-known sketch involving, well, our favourite characters inspired by Akira Toriyama was the likes of Moneyball Z. Basically, we had a baseball episode five years before Super even aired. But it has that vibe of Boomer trying to understand Dragon Ball about it, but some moments were kind of hilarious, and unlike many parodies, it didn't come off as mean-spirited. In general, Cartoon Network has been no stranger to referencing the franchise. I mean, I mean, we all know why in their animated works. In The Amazing World of Gumball, there are a few examples, but Super Saiyan is even name-dropped directly in Season 4, Episode 4, The Others. The very Gohan-like hairstyle and garb, and of course, musclies. Similarly, the Disney show The Owl House features a brief gag with a movie called Dragon Claw Z. The character named Edna tried to control a transformation, screaming loudly just like a Dragon Ball character would. Which supposedly was how things worked in the Dragon Claw thing that she saw. She's pretty shocked also to discover that it's 30 years old. That meme going around the whole thing about nostalgia and people feeling old. And remember watching it in theatres. And making us all feel ancient. Edna, we, we, we so relate. Also, The Simpsons has a little nod to Dragon Ball in one of the Treehouse of Horror segments. I think it's in the 31st edition in particular. We're being treated to a parody of Into the Spider-Verse. This of course featuring many different homers. And one of them has a bit of a Majin Buu vibe about it. He even fights a mecha Mr. Burns. There are of course more of these references in various media in different languages, but for today's list, we went mostly with the stuff that was available in English. But if you're part of our multinational audience, do tell us some examples of Dragon Ball references in your country. I know that a lot of you folks in Latin America would have some stories about that. As you can see, Dragon Ball has fully bled into our pop culture, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Sometimes it might sadly mean that its origin might be lost, like in the case of Over 9000 or Shoop the Whoop, but such is the way of culture and how it works. If you think about it, it's truly amazing how cultures recycled something that started in the 16th century, or even beyond, because there's a lot of proof to say that Journey to the West existed in some form way before that, and went to live its own life, not resembling the original at all. I guess that this just shows the strength of Akira Toriyama's legacy, doesn't it? Well, that's everything for now, and until the next time, folks, we'll catch you later.